Hey guys, I want to talk today about something very serious and that that, uh, that strikes a lot of people and hits hard a lot of people, and that's depression. And I want to talk about how to beat depression. So I don't talk about it a lot, but you know, I had a big business in the, in the late '90s and 300 employees, and was on the front page of the paper and kind of a celebrity, a little you know, in a small way, and um, and lost everything. And at that time, and it, and then you know, had people turn against me and betray me, and my wife gets sick, and literally the people that that uh, I thought were my best friends and others turned on me. Other people who I thought liked me would not even return my phone calls, and I got super depressed. And it seems like I got there was no, I mean, I just didn't have a future. I didn't know what to do, didn't know where to go, and got super depressed. And I'm not a depressive person, and I think I think some people struggle with that, and. And I think there can be chemical components and other things that encourage people to get real medical help as well. But I'll tell you how I beat it and I'll, I'll tell you what happened. And I remember literally waking up every morning and just f with that sinking feeling, this like, just like I was, you know, circling the toilet bowl and just kind of the, the sucking sound, just feeling like nothing to live for, nothing good was gonna happen and this feeling and, and, I'll, but, and I hated that feeling. I hated that feeling. So I began to just resist the feeling and I started to say the exact opposite. I started to say, no, today's a good day and, and it's gonna work. And I started just kind of speaking to my soul as David did, right? He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. So who's he talking to? He's talking to his soul, saying, bless the Lord. And so I'll, I'll tell you one of the one of the first things I did to begin to just I'll tell you how you can get a moment of relief. It's like a shock of 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 uh, to break the power of depression instantaneously. Doesn't always last a long time, but you can break it instantly. I'll tell you how, how you do it. And what I did is I I would start I I started dancing to the Lord. I just started, oh God, oh God, and I'm, I'm dancing, and it was so awful. It was so bad. I would start giggling and start laughing, you know, at myself. No one's in the room. Okay. Trust me. You know, it's not something you'd want to ever see. And, and I start, I would start dancing and, and praising God and just kind of dancing around, you know, imagine a hippopotamus, you know, on one leg and you probably got a good visual. Um, and I would, then I would laugh. I'd burst out laughing. And for a moment, the depression is 100% God. And I would feel God's joy in his presence. So the Bible says actually laughter is good medicine. And it's actually the number one medicine of a human soul is laughter. There's studies that show that actually human laughter actually releases chemicals in your body and it, and it releases power. And so it's actually spiritual medicine. So the first thing that happens, you want some quick hit medicine that just makes you feel better? Start laughing for real. Laugh at yourself, laugh at someone else. Just laughter is good medicine. And by the way, the Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. It actually works the other way around too. So in joy is his presence. And so as soon as you get joyful, you close your eyes, you start to feel his presence. So you can get short-term relief by doing that, number one. And number two, I began to focus on who God is in adoration prayer. Most powerful thing I have ever touched in my life is adoration prayer. And so much depression today is focused on comparison and focused on self, it's horizontal, it's looking at myself compared to someone else, how successful am I, am I relative to them, how good looking am I relative to them, how heavy am I relative to someone else, how many people like my stuff, how many people don't like my stuff. and. And so there's this huge comparison and it's all horizontal. And do you know, do you know that amounts to nothing, right? People's opinions to, to let other people's opinions guide and influence us is actually unbiblical. It's called fear of man. And, and we're to be free of that. And I'll tell you what I did. And I'll, I'll tell you what I did is I, during that whole season, I started doing this prayer book. I wrote this prayer book and it only became a book much later. It was just my prayer journal. And what I did is start to focus on who God is. And so I, I can walk you through just super quick here to some of this. I, I, I love the Psalms. And so I turn the Psalms into first person prayer. So where it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
I say instead, you are my shepherd, I shall not want. So I could talk to him about it and it's focus 100% on who God is. So, so I, I, I first start, God, who you are, you're almighty. The hills quake before you, the mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. You have all authority. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The all authority has been granted to you in heaven and on earth, Jesus. You're the all in all, the alpha and omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. You're the beautiful returning king. It says the sun will be ashamed at your appearing. You're glorious and majestic. You're miraculous and powerful. You're the God of all wisdom. In Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You're humble. You came mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. You're magnanimous. You're gentleness. It says your humility makes us great. You're gracious. You're compassionate and slow to anger, abounding in love. Your love personified, you're available. He says, you're very present help in times of trouble, Lord. You're beautiful, you're righteous and just, perfect and pure. You're glad, you're the God who sees and cares. What have I asked of the Lord so far? In my, this is a prayer, right? But I'm not asking anything. I'm simply proclaiming who he is. And guess what? You, David said, magnify the Lord, O my soul. And so I'm magnifying the Lord. And guess what else? What happens when you magnify the Lord? You, everything else is demagnified, including your horizontal little bitty problems. They become nothing as they indeed are as we start to focus on who God is. You're good and generous. You're loving and caring. And uh, it's just all verses. You're the God who speaks. Then I go who you are to me, who I am to you. And uh, so it's just it's just putting starting to meditate and get hungry to know God and I, I I I the Lord spoke to me once very early on in my life and he, he said son if you are ever dissatisfied it's because you have forgotten your primary calling which is to know me and and you think about that if you're ever dissatisfied it's because you've forgotten your primary calling to know me. And I, every time I hear that, I center again. I realize, you know what? Everything in my life might be a failure, but I'm going to be a successful knower of God. I can succeed in that regardless of what anybody says to me or whatever happens in my business or my career or my marriage or my relationships. I can be a knower. And it centers me. And I am to be a, I am to be a knower of God. And you are to be a knower of God. So let's put him first. And so the best way to beat depression, number one, is put on joy, put on joy, put it on. And it's warfare against the, 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 the pressures. And then also um, focus on knowing God and becoming a successful knower of God, which no one can stop you from doing. All right. Bless you.